We're positive. Oh, oh. let's go. And negative. <laughs> we're all of it. How on earth did it end up happening in our watch that we're going to go into the um, fate, the uh, possible caldera? <laughs> we manifested it. Manifest. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were doing a puzzle. We were, and it just happened to be, uh, happened to do both. True. I think you can walk and chew gum at the same time. I think the Two demigods that call this caldera home, our possible caldera home, knew that we were the only watch that could handle it. <laughs> this is the 8 to 12 watch, the greatest watch <laughs> the world has ever known. Coming at you, live from the deep you. sea. Our apologies. <laughs> <laughs> A great balance. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, I think we just lost our video engineer. <laughs> oh, no, Amber's, Amber's doing fine. Somebody was, somebody was just laughing. In, just ignoring us. We're all laughing. We're all laughing. We're just happy people. Right, Robert? We are. <laughs> <laughs> We're tracking a line over to this high point here. Yep. So we are moving. All right. So let's go. Are we going to do a blue water hop over? Oh, we do get blue water. Um, that too. Do you, do you oh, mean no. right between the two peaks? Is that where you're, like the two high yeah, points? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's pilot's choice. Well, Adelaide's just catching up with you, just a heads up. Yeah, 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 it's not going to be that much deeper in here. Okay. Yeah, it actually it doesn't look super steep or anything, so we should be okay. Cool. <coughs> yes. Sebastian mentioned a push core possibly at the sediment cover of the caldera, if you think that may be a possibility. Okay. Um, yeah, um, that, that is one thing we're kind of curious about is uh, whether or not it's more heavily sedimented. So if we if we find some thick sediments, we'll give it a shot. Here, uh, Janet. So, yeah. So hey, push cores are working this dive, as far as we know, so uh, why not? Sounds like it. <laughs> I don't think we've taken any, right? Any push cores? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think yeah. so. It's nope. been too thin of a sediment cover. Yeah. I think yeah. they're thinking at like the the top top of the caldera. Um, or the center of it. Sorry. Um, probably somewhere on the uh, presumed the uh, putative caldera floor. Um, okay. Uh, uh, that's that's where we're going to be likelier to find uh, some thicker sediments. Cool. These are probably not nodules. They are probably fragments because <laughs> that's been our luck with these fields around here so far. Oh, okay. They do look pretty fragmenty to me. Oh, no, yeah. Our deep sea travelers online wanted to make sure you saw those cracked open pillow basalts, and we did, that had poured out, that had spilled out. We were watching those down in the lounge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I've seen some of those uh, in the Lao Basin, too. Sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, those pillow flows just break apart at some point. Well, uh, a portion of their uh, Innards are still gooey, and you get that uh, you get that drainage texture that way. It's uh, pretty distinctive. Oh wow! The uh, Adelaide, uh, yeah, the Adelaide camp can kind of show you the the topography that we're in and how it's very different than, than the yeah. steep slope we were just in with a, yeah. a, a few yeah, moments a, ago. It's a relatively flat area here. Yeah. So. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Oh, there's a thing. Oh, sea cucumber? 
Or sponge that's tipped oh, over. Yeah. That is a sponge that is tipped over. Is it? <laughs> I, I think, think so. so, yeah. It looks so, yeah. Oh, but it, I mean, it looks like it's changed the top of its shape a little bit, too. That's kind of interesting. Mm, that, like it's been tipped over long enough that it's starting to grow upward. I don't know. It looks like a saxophone. Yeah, <laughs> it does. A saxophone sponge? Yeah. I'm jazzing things up a little bit in here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. This is interesting. <laughs> We've actually got several corals right here. That might be a Norella from Noid because all the polyps are facing downwards. Interesting. Exciting times. We're diving right in. Uh, we will take a moment and uh, introduce ourselves, but also update you on the dive plan. It looks like uh, we've got just about our watch left um, in this dive before we recover the ROVs, so stay with us. Uh, let's uh, enjoy these next four hours together as we uh, journey through this possible caldera as deep sea travelers. I'm Daniel Kinzer, I'm science communication fellow um, on board EV Nautilus for the Ala Almoana Kaiuli expedition. Uh, I've lost track of the number of dives. I think it's dive number 11 on unnamed Seamount 15. We're slowly making our way back. Can we get a zoom on one of these? Yeah, are those sea pens? Down the island chain towards the main Hawaiian islands. But uh, we're so thankful to still be out here in Papahanaumokuakea with all of you. And uh, yeah, I'm going to throw it over to the wonderful Mahina Lani. Heavenly Moon. Aloha ahi ahi, o Mahina Lani Kavaleri Ko Inoa, no o ahu mai ao. Good evening everyone, my name is Mahina Lani and um, tuning in from, or calling in from Nautilus. We're just enjoying the Ole Kukahi, or Kulua Moon outside and it is also Piko Wakea, which is the fall equinox, so very excited. Eyo. Mahalo Mahina and toss all the way back over to Kukui, our light. Uh, mahalo Nui Dan, Aloha, um, Ke Aloha Nui Kako, Ovo Kukui, no Moio. Um, aloha everybody, my name's Kukui, um, I'm from Maui and I'm one of the data loggers on board and I'm so blessed and honored to be here with you guys, with you folks on this um, dive. And Papahano Mokuake, I'm getting to learn a bunch of new things um, from everybody and getting to be in this really special place. Mahalo. Mahalo Kukui. And everyone, meet Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't sing Hello. it. I didn't sing it, Virginia. Um, I'm Virginia. I've definitely never heard that joke before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, My apologies for Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, so I am a, uh, a graduate student at Florida State University getting a, a PhD. Um, I study uh, seamount communities, so um, somewhat similar to the seamount that we're looking at today. I look at corals and sponges and, and their associates and crabs and try to identify the communities and um, looking at um, spe some specifically impacts of, um, you know, human, human impacts like trawling. Um, and I'm also looking at like spatial distribution, so it's exciting and it's it's so so great to be a part of this You know this cruise and this community here um, And yeah, so excited to be here with y'all on this um, This fo this feature which is on the gradient between caldera <laughs> and not caldera <laughs> <laughs> All right our fearless watch lead <laughs> oh dear Hey folks uh, my name is Val Finlayson. I am a postdoc at the University of Maryland, um, uh, which is um, what I do most of the time, uh, since I'm not at sea uh, all the time, sometimes unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm a geologist and I do a lot of uh, isotope geochemistry on uh, sea mounts such as this one, trying to figure out um, their origins and uh, along with the help of some uh, very talented uh, teammates, their ages. and. Uh, yeah, um, I like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll throw it up to uh, what's definitely one of the most talented and most fun to work with, 
groups in our front row I've ever had the privilege of working with. Who's going to take it over first? Amber, do you want to start? <laughs> over to Amber. All right. Uh, sorry, let me be coordinated. <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm Amber Flynn, I'm the video engineer on this watch, the greatest watch of all time. Uh, when I'm not on the Nautilus, I live in Los Angeles and I work as a cinematographer and I own a production company and work on specializing in kind of documentary and uh, narrative projects. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll go next. Um, Zach Gonzalez, I am Robert's co-pilot piloting the Atalanta. Uh, come from Houston, Texas. Can y'all hear him? Are you yeah, I think he's SPL. on. I don't oh. know if you're on SPL. I am on. I'm on it. Yeah, I'll turn you up. How's that better? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there I we go. I was like, really? <laughs> Anyways, I'm Zach Gonzalez. Um, Robert's co-pilot, piloting the Atalanta. Uh, come from Houston, Texas with a few years of ROV under my belt and enjoying my time out here with the crew. You've been sitting in this seat oh. for half the watch That's true. lately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess piloting the Hercules sometimes. <laughs> half the time. Oh, By the like, way, yesterday was more than or earlier, whenever the heck the last watch was. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you're pulling on me, by the way. Uh, your pocket got tugged on. Oh, we got to get going. And I'm wandering off into the weeds. <laughs> so I'm Robert Waters, and I'm currently sitting in the Herc seat. Uh, I think I'm out here for half this year. And so I'm gone for three weeks, and I'm back here again for our imaging cruise. That should be a fun one. Yeah. I don't know what we're looking at yet, but <laughs> I imagine it's going to be interesting stuff because the, you know, Dr. Ballard is going to be out here. So awesome. Some cool. VIPs and yeah, I'm sure they want to look at something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Catalina and I am a navigator here, um, helping the ROVs find their way around and I'm a master's student at USF's College of Marine Science in St. Petersburg, Florida. And yeah, I'm really happy to be here and enjoying these last few dives that we have all together as the 8 to 12 watch. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's been an awesome journey. And uh, you guys will get a kick out of this. We have a viewer online who says, every time my cat hears Daniel talk, <laughs> she starts going crazy and won't stop meowing. <laughs> <laughs> either either he's the cat whisperer or she knows his voice heralds science to come. It must be science to come. Oh I've never been called a cat whisperer before. So. Well, you have now. Oh, boy. <laughs> no. My kids will be excited and say, hey, Dad, we need to get a cat. <laughs> Little yeah. shout out shout out to Aliyah and Koa and, and my yeah. wife Erin. They're, they're listening in from home. I love you guys and miss you. Be back soon. Time to get a cat. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even yeah. think about yeah. it. This is your sign. A lot of cats that need them a home. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Don't even think about it, kiddos. Love you. <laughs> You're signed to do it. Yeah. Just go get one while he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got my guinea pigs. No, no. Hey. Oh, oh, no. Guinea pigs? <laughs> no guinea pigs either. Yeah, that looks like a pumice. They're really cute, though. Or a dead sponge, one of the two. Do they live outside? Um, one did, and then it got eaten by a cat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Cats are evil. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one lived outside for like a week, and then we caught him and brought him back in. Uh. So now he's a fully domesticated uh, guinea pig. Uh. Yeah. Huna? Huna. That's Huna. Huna, yeah. Oh, Huna. Huna. Yeah, Huna. he likes to hide a lot, so we named him Huna. <laughs> I like it. Huna. Is Huna usually in a cage indoors, though? Um, he is usually, and then my parents bring him out into the living room, and he gets to sit oh. on this special little pink couch that my mom bought him. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. My parents swear that they wanted me to get rid of the guinea pigs, but now that's like their besties, oh, yeah. so. Oh. It may end up like that with the, with the cat as well, so you never know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Back to the science. Back to the science. That's what the cat really wants. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, it is Friday, and uh, my group back at home had its uh, weekly Friday lab meeting. That's right. So I've been seeing some of the some of the emails from that, <laughs> which uh, usually usually it's pretty quiet because usually everything just gets discussed and then everybody goes on with their lives. You requested a Zoom, right? Yes, yeah. he did. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, wow. Is that another Ooh. macro day? Look at the, oh. Yeah, this is different though. It's got um very long. Um, oh, uh, like white bits on it. So um, I think it, I think they're on their pectoral fins. Or no, they're. I can't tell. But that's the, wonderful. The oh, side oh, fins, yeah, as yeah, I yeah. call them. Um, someone earlier was saying that the black macros that we see here are, are in the genus Kumba. But um, I'm not we, sure if that had those those long white um, fins as well. That's wonderful. It looks like a like are those those like the barbells too? Like, kind of like under their their mouth, but it's like attached to what looks like their pelvic fins. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's different. I hadn't noticed that before. All right, moving on. <laughs> Sounds okay. good. Bye, fishy friend. Thank you. Bye, fish friend. So yeah, there were some extra emails from my lab group today. I, I got curious, wanted to see what the uh, thread of discussion was about. And um, it turns out one of our uh, problems from a few months ago has returned oh. in the form of uh, the squirrels that keep getting into uh, the ceiling of our clean room. Oh, <laughs> oh, boy. oh, no. oh no. Squirrels in the clean in room. In the clean room. Mm -hmm. That sounds like not where you want squirrels. That is not where you want a squirrel. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to are they are they trying to work in the lab too or oh, hey. um I, I actually did uh, send an email back about this uh, saying maybe we should capture them and train them to be lab assistants. <laughs> there guess, we go. Uh, we are having a squirrel problem in our clean room again, and uh, somebody actually caught a picture this time. Uh, and it it may not just be one squirrel; it might be two or three. Oh, what are they? Oh, you got a whole for? recruit system. What are yeah, we don't keeping even... in there that they might want. There's no food in there. <laughs> That's a big no-no. Like, I don't yeah. know what, what their interest is in that drop ceiling, but clearly there's something wrong because there shouldn't even, there shouldn't be a way to get in. There shouldn't even be like air communication anywhere near the clean room with the outside world. So I'm just like, let alone squirrel uh, nests. You were about to have a bunch of baby squirrels running around the clean room. Oh, no. <laughs> That's probably what it is. It's probably a family of squirrels up there. Well, we've, we've already like, we, we thought we had, um, uh, uh, relocated the squirrels um, on two occasions already, because once we had a squirrel like running around in the hallway a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh! That, and that was a pretty big deal. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's been one in the ceiling. It was, I think, at the beginning of this year, and uh, it seems like they're back. <laughs> oh. So they yeah. wanted to come say hi again. Uh, we, we'd prefer if they said hi when they were still outside. <laughs> I had a flying squirrel in my house in the what? San Bernardino Mountains. I live in Lake Arrowhead. And oh, yeah. there was a, oh, wow. A flying squirrel yeah, in the house. And I didn't know they had flying squirrels <laughs> Yeah. In wow. California mountains, but they do. Oh. <laughs> That's wow. awesome. Did it, like, fly into your house? No, but or? It, was, it was climbing the walls. It was, it was oh, wow. Pretty, wow. Pretty nimble. And the dogs spotted him. And that was, yeah. Oh, wow. Looks like we've got another fish over there okay. on the right, too. There's a little chaos that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, what, what coral is that in the back there? Oh, coral or fish, coral or fish. Um, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Biologist's <laughs> choice. <laughs> yeah, Biologist's choice. Fish moves, <laughs> coral will stay put. So. <laughs> <laughs> At least we don't have squirrels on the ship. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine That'd a seasick fun. squirrel? Oh, oh boy. Oh, that would be awful. Of course, yeah, some days I'm basically a squirrel and I get seasick, so there you go. <laughs> Ooh, that's a large aritogorgia. It's enormous. And not enormous in the tall sense, but in, like, just its, its yeah, breadth. that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think it's um, stretched outward in a different direction than we're used to seeing it. I think so. Usually, don't they kind of stick straight out, mm -hmm. those branches? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I wasn't Can sure what it was at first. 
because I could see the I could see the spiral uh, stalk, but yeah, it looked like more primnoid like almost with those branches. It's still beautiful. I love these really oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I was just confused for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's almost golden. Oh no. I think there's schmutz on the still cam. Uh-oh. -uh. Huh. Ooh, that's a nice squat. Mm -hmm. Squat lobster. Should I run it again? That's, oh, oh I see. It's still there. Right. <clears throat> All right, that's beautiful. So there's something on the lens, you say? Uh, the still cam lens. Yeah. I heard about that earlier. I think uh, ROV got a little close to something and got some schmutz on it. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Why is this not a scratch? No, it just looks like a black smudge. So it's been there a while. I think um, it got on there about 1.30 this afternoon. I remember. Came up here real quick and that happened around then. We <laughs> <laughs> really do appreciate all of you who are spending your Friday evenings with us. And uh, we're going to make sure we bring the party to you. There will be lots of singing again, maybe a little bit of dancing. Perhaps. And, uh, definitely some deep sea, possibly caldera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's Po Aluma. It's Friday. Yes, uh, Aloha hey Friday. Friday. <laughs> so I take it nothing's happening with the schmutz. So, yeah. so nah. there for the duration? I think so. Can we turn the windshield wipers on? <laughs> <laughs> this is as good as it gets. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Robert's giving us the good old windshield wipe, just left to right. On so the actually, one thing we do at Ocean Network Canada is that we bring down a toilet brush <laughs> and clean a camera lens that's Smart. on the bottom. Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, that's fun. Look <laughs> yeah, using one of Scott's C pens. Yeah, I was just wondering if uh, you could do something like that, but no, nah. it's it's stay input. But thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys seem to have the uh, image dark right now. I'm trying. I just pulled it up. Um, yeah. Is it in the center or can we? It's something. Yeah. That can if be you cropped. can see the, if you can look, look at the last couple of pictures we took. It's it's in the center. Oh, I can't. I'm just viewing the, your screen. I don't have control. I get it. I get it. I get it now. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's a pretty good smudge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That was not there earlier. No. So it's a smudge? Yeah. yeah. Here I oh, can. It's not just something stuck on the outside? I mean, it probably. It, I think there was something stuck on the outside, and now it's just a little, a nice little schmear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's black, some kind of. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if there's a good. Yeah. Are we there so. yet? I mean, we are actually on the down slope now. Looks like right here. Yeah, yeah. Approaching the rim. Oh, uh, yeah, we suddenly <laughs> got out of the debris field and into the lava flow, so we're getting closer to something again. What it is, we do not know. So, Val, um, do you want to head just straight for Waypoint 11, like kind of down in there, or what would you like to do? Um. If we could pause kind of once we hit what is the putative caldera floor, okay. and if we can turn around and take a quick peek at the wall, that would be awesome. And then, sure. yeah, we can uh, move over to waypoint 11. Okay. I have no idea what we're going to find up here. It's exciting. That's it is. why we're exploring. Exploration. Science. The final frontier. Is it up here or down there? No. Nope. 
It's down slope, right? Yeah, 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 it's down slope. Yeah. So not up here, down there. Yeah. Going down. I'm trying to be one with the ROV. <laughs> <laughs> Savelle, I think you mentioned earlier right. today. It's like 50 um, meters or something. What um, a caldera is, but what? What from are which part? The, Down to the bottom. Yeah, we'll to the bottom. Is that it's the like, bottom? Yeah, like right. Point 11? Well, I think right in here is where it kind of begins. So like 120 meters, 130 meters out. But, but like 50 down, right? Yeah. Yeah. Looks about yeah, that. Yeah. 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 I have a question about clarifying. When we talk about the bathymetric maps, is it appropriate to talk about topography or do we talk about bathymetry when it's underwater? Um, technically, bathymetry is the correct term. Okay. Um, I still use topography, though. I have been, and I was, <laughs> and, uh, and I was wondering about that. Yeah, so. it's, it's one of those things. It's because topography also, like, has... Like change it like it's got the connotation of things changing too. Whereas to me, bathymetry is like your map product, which is maybe not accurate, but that yeah. is how my brain is interprets it. it. Yeah, I just don't think we use it in that context yeah. as frequently as topography. So it feels more natural mm -hmm. for topography to kind of roll off your tongue in that when you're using it that way. I I do it too occasionally and try to catch it. So I think I noticed you, know. you catch it earlier today, and yeah, then I was like, oh, well, my I, think I did too, and I was well. like. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've been on the stutter bus pretty badly all day today. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it happens. Well, that was a good lesson for me. I said, oh, maybe that's not the right term. I just really love topo maps on land, and that's what these look like. So. I like bathy maps underwater. <laughs> <laughs> I do, too, apparently. Yeah, I do, I do like <laughs> bathymetric maps are... Uh, they're wonderful. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's too easy to spend way too much time just like scooting around the ocean basins in Google Earth when you should be doing something like writing a paper, <laughs> <laughs> which your, I am very guilty get your, of. Get your papers done, Sometimes you just Dr. get lost Bell. in it for a little while. Most people spend their time on Google Earth looking for their house. Can I find <laughs> my house? Is it there? Yep. I Imagine tour that. France. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. France. Nice, Kukui. Kukui is planning a trip to Zanzibar. <laughs> I hope that I'm not breaking that news. Yeah, mom and, <laughs> mom and dad. How are you? Yeah. Have you been? It's incredible. See, I, I heard, told you Kukui. I heard. It was a lifelong dream for me to go, and that Aww. was like one of my first big trips in my 20s, and it was just the coolest. Aww. I highly recommend it. Wow. There you go. I'm fully convinced. Amazing. I am fully convinced now. Hey. Sorry, mom, dad. Uh, uh. They if you want to come along, you. come along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Who knows, in uh, probably 15 years, Nautilus might be there on uh, the other side of the Indian Ocean that keeps moving west. And uh, maybe we'll all be on. <laughs> yes, sir. You all can come along, too, if you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Team trip. Watch, hey, watch, team, going? watch, watch trip. team trip. Watch team trip. Watch that. And then we'll watch goes on vacation. from <laughs> No Freddie way. Mercury. Yeah. From yeah. Yeah. Queen. Really? Didn't know yeah. that. He's, huh. he's from Zanzibar. Wait, who's from Zanzibar? Freddie Mercury? Freddie Mercury. Who's that? Lead singer of Queen. Oh, Queen. I love it. Yeah. You know Bohemian Rhapsody? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. I gotcha, love gotcha. it. Okay, Queen. The young these days. You're awesome. <laughs> oh, it's tight. And then we can make a tour to all the party spots that Daniel was talking about. All the party mm -hmm. spots in Zanzibar. Let's go. <laughs> Oh yeah, so Val, I was going to ask if you could elaborate on what a caldera is for anyone at home who didn't hear your explanation earlier today. Sure, I can do that. So, um, yeah, crater and caldera, similar similar sorts of sorts of structures, and uh, both the uh, uh, common features of uh, uh, volcanoes. A crater is uh, typically smaller than a uh, caldera, and uh, um, is not uh, uh, wider than it is deep and uh, can be formed by things like uh, uh, basically exploding, um, you know, blowing uh, 
uh, blowing rock out of out of an edifice or whatever. Um, uh, a caldera is uh, notable because it's uh, 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 usually a pretty pretty large feature, um, <clears throat> and uh, it's uh, uh, typically related to we think the um, uh, subsidence of the volcano itself. So it's a uh, a block or a series of blocks that drop down as, uh, say, a volcano deflates. Um, yeah, typically quite a bit larger than uh, than uh, uh, your run-of-the-mill volcanic crater. And, uh, yeah, very, very different kind of wide morphology. So uh, the simple way we were explaining it earlier is, like, compare compare a pot to, like, a pan. Except the pan's huge. Um, and a, a really good real-world example of uh, caldera that um, probably most folks are familiar with is at the summit of uh, uh, Kilauea on uh, the Big Island of Hawaii, uh, which uh, w if you go up to uh, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park and you uh, drive into the uh, summit region of the park, you can see kind of this vast, you get to overlook uh, right on the edge of the caldera and you get to see this vast expanse that's kind of uh, uh, dropped down. and which has dropped down considerably uh, during the 2018 eruption. So if you were last there prior to then, uh, it does look a lot different now. But yeah, within that, um, you may it, it is uh, technically possible to uh, develop a crater within that larger caldera system too. And yeah, we find calderas all around the world. Um, occasionally we find them underwater. Uh, uh, there's a, a some evidence for some uh, some caldera systems uh, active in the uh, submarine volcanic portion of uh, Tonga, for example, and I suspect a couple ex are, are, uh, have been um, tentatively identified up in the Aleutian Arc too. So they're everywhere. They're pretty cool. Well, I've been I've heard uh, Yellowstone National Park described as sort of a super caldera. Is that a real yeah. thing? Um, the super volcano is not a term that we use. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 more of a like a you know it's it's sort of a pop culture sort of term. Um, it is part of uh, what a what appears to be a mantle plume fed volcanic system, and yeah, it, it has produced uh, a, a series of uh, calderas um, on uh, in in western. Uh, uh, North America and over the last several million years. Oh, interesting. So, and, um, yeah, if, if we've interpreted the geologic history uh, along that uh, uh, that portion of the U.S. correctly, um, it actually looks like there is uh, an age progression of calderas that you can trace across the U.S. And once you get far enough west, uh, you actually run into the Columbia River flood basalts, which are linked to the uh, Yellowstone plume as well. Interesting. So. Um, yeah, it's it's a large volcanic system, um, but um, it's it's actually got a lot in common with places like Hawaii. Uh, the major difference is that um, that plume is uh, underneath continental crust, which is uh, uh, considerably thicker than oceanic crust and a different composition. So the volcanic style is quite different. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, that's that has calderas too. There's uh, some calderas. Uh, California, and I think there's one that's like right on the northern border of New Mexico, uh, the Vias region, um, fed by the suspected Raton plume. Um, yeah, uh, Plagrian fields in Italy. Yeah, they're all over the place. Very cool. Compi Plagrian, I think, is the is the name that uh, most of us are using nowadays. Sorry, Plagrian fields is an old version. Compi Plagrian. Always awesome to learn from your wealth of knowledge, geological, volcanic knowledge, just flowing, flowing out. Like a pillow basalt. I love, love yeah. it. I love it. Or maybe a sheet flow, depending on how fast I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Quick uh, update on the trip to Zanzibar. There's going to be a room for rent in Maui, and apparently <laughs> Dad's getting another va'a, oh, so uh, wow. that's it. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> uh -oh. I see uh, how it is. is. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, they're joking. They're going to be so happy to have you back home. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you guys, too. <laughs> oh, we have Lydia in Oregon wondering if Crater Lake, that beautiful uh, high mountain lake in Oregon, is a, is a, actually a caldera, not I do a not crater. know off the top of my head, but I'm going to go look it up. I know, I've also seen some other beautiful crater lakes. My family and I, Aaron, Aaron and I traveled to Ecuador where some of those high active volcanoes and mountains have uh, beautiful 
I don't know if they're craters or calderas, but they're... Uh, I love Crater Lake. It's so beautiful there. It is awesome, um, yeah. Let's see. So far, I'm finding evidence that it is a crater. It is large. It is, but yeah, craters it can be large. large. There's crawfish do, in do, it, do, too. Do, do, do. <laughs> oh, nope, I'm wrong. It is actually a caldera. Oh, oh. that's fun. Which it does Good kind call, of look Lydia. like, yeah. Good call. This is why I shouldn't be reading the preview blurbs on things. <laughs> <laughs> it's also why we love our deep sea explorers, our travelers contributing online with your Ooh. questions, your comments, your wonders, your curiosity. All of our family and friends who are tuning in, it means so much to us. So mahalo nui and, and keep exploring with us. Ooh, there's a bathmetric survey of it, and it's gorgeous. And you can see all the resurgent domes. Oh, wow. wow. And a landslide. Yeah, that's that's very typical caldera morphology. That's very cool. What tools would they have used to create that bathymetric uh, survey on, of Crater Lake? Uh, I don't know the exact. Um, I, I, so this this is Wikimedia it's not Commons. Very so, it's but not it, very deep, is it? Is it just going to be uh, Probably just sonar? Yeah, I mean, this is a been shallow a water higher, sonar yeah. from a boat. Yeah. yeah, a yeah. higher frequency one is used in shallow waters. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Catalina. Smaller units than the ones that go on these boats. Yeah, true. We are using a uh, unit of a sonar yes. system. <laughs> a true unit. <laughs> <Indeed. laughs> we get to do a cruise out of the Azores, and if you go up in the volcanoes there, there's, there's two lakes with a little town around it. It's really wow. beautiful to be up on the rim and look down in there. So there's Ooh, a green lake yeah. and a blue lake. So Ooh, wow. Oh, that's Lagos, cool. Uh, Azul and Lagos Verde. Yeah. Yes. Lagos Azul. Even. Yeah, there's, I don't understand why the two lakes are totally different colors. Mm. Just different mineral together, content, I guess. Oh, that's wild. Okay, so um, the National Park Service said that they, they mapped it in 2000. Um, and they have I imagery, et cetera, et cetera, state of the art L2 beam system, whatever. However, it was converted from water depth, right? So zero to, because that's what I'm used to, right? Yeah. To elevations using a lake level of 1,882.6 hmm. meters above sea level. Whoa. And I just was, it just, I was like, oh my gosh zero sea level for this is not actually sea level so it's not true depth i just <laughs> yeah no that's wild to me the surface of that lake is not at zero meters it's at 1882.6 meters nice sometimes you got to update your baselines a little yeah. bit to better fit the environment that you're looking at mm -hmm. as long as it's uh, clearly yeah. marked that but that's the, what you've done. It looks like the deepest part of Crater Lake is a little bit under like 550 meters. So yeah, that's still a decent depth. Mm -hmm. It's still it's over to shake a, a stick thousand at. meters above sea level, though. Yeah, no, well, it's nothing to shake a stick at. That's so funny. I don't know why I didn't think about that. <laughs> hey Val. Yes. So we're kind of at that point where we're where the floor starts, um, and it seems like it's been a pretty gradual slope down. So I yeah. don't know how much of a wall. We'll see. We're not going to see much of a wall. I agree. So. Um, yeah. How about we work our way over toward uh, waypoint eleven then? Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We've been able to stay, you know, pretty close to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you look at the rear mm -hmm. camera view, which is mm -hmm. not very good. But mm, that's a cool. Thing in Atl Atlantis camera. Yeah, that is a cool. Oh, Whoa. hi! Wow. Oh, that's really cool. Weird looking Don't fish. know if I can see him. If I turn, he might pop up. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. oh he's uh, coming. I don't know. <laughs> we try to see if I can find him. Uh, I don't see him. Oh, oh well. Oh well. Hit. Bummer. Yeah, he yeah, didn't want to hang out. He, he might friends. have gotten hit. <laughs> see it. <laughs> I just see the shadow of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the largest known caldera. Um, I actually did a tiny bit of work on that um, for my master's degree. Is the Lagarita caldera in uh, uh, central Colorado, in the San Juan volcanic field. Um, 
is part of a uh, long, long extinct volcanic system, so there's absolutely nothing to worry about, I promise. Um, so, uh, this was a lot of activity in the uh, tertiary, so like uh, Lagarita collapsed and erupted uh, 27.8 million years ago, if I remember correctly, and erupted the uh, Fish Canyon Tuff. Um, 5,000 cubic kilometers worth of tuff that we know of in the rock record, which is enormous. Uh, but yeah, that was part of a uh, 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 volcanic flare-up in the uh, western United States that we think was related to um, a tectonic event below the North American uh, uh, Continental Shield where um, the uh, former Farallon Plate, which uh, was part of the Panthalassic Pacific Ocean um, millions of years ago, subducted below um, the United States, but it was very shallow subduction. And at some point, it, we think the plate foundered out from underneath the North American continent. And uh, that would have advected a bunch of mantle material, which uh, probably decompressed and melted and caused some of this volcanic flare up. And, potentially related to the uplift of the Colorado Plateau and all too. So it's it's a pretty wild history getting into, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, like the Colorado Four Corners area geology. Really interesting stories out there. There's a really good episode of Drain the Oceans about the Pacific Northwest and the geology and the plate tectonics up Ooh. there. It's really good. Like Drain Cascadia? the Oceans. Like what? Cascadia? Yeah, 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 and they talk about like that plate boundary, and it's actually pretty like wow. scary. Yeah, Cascadia is pretty gnarly. Why is it gnarly? Um, so it's it's part of what's called a uh, uh, mega thrust subduction zone, and it's capable of generating uh, great earthquakes, uh, very strong uh, earthquakes, and it's been known to cause tsunamis uh, in the past. There are like historical records of uh, tsunamis. Uh, in places like Japan that have been tentatively traced back to Cascadia. Wow. So it's, it's kind of like Chile or the Aleutian Arc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Parts of Japan itself. Just a tsunami waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But don't don't be scared of that kind of thing uh, happening. They're extraordinarily rare, and while well, they do happen, um, you know, our, our networking is getting uh, uh, quite good. These do not happen frequently along these fault segments. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's very unlikely that uh, these sorts of events are, um, you know, guaranteed to happen in your lifetime or anything. You know, we can't predict that. That's not something that geologists can do. But um, the, the odds are quite low. That's good. Yeah. Within our lifetimes. You know, it's one of those weird dual probability things where um, the probability is high that an event will happen, but quite low that it will happen within a timeline that a human can uh, uh, visualize, you know, basically our lifetimes. Mahalo, Dr. Val. Welcome. Mega thrust sub subduction zone. Look it up. It's an interesting uh, Sounds like a setting. dangerous dance move to me. Really? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's not yeah, geology is full of all sorts of weird terminology. <laughs> this is pretty interesting. This isn't uh, this isn't the amount of sediment that we were kind of expecting to see in in an area that's probably you know been sitting here for you know, what, millions, millions of, of years. years? So, that's weird. Does this look similar to you, uh, to your eyes, both the uh, geological and, and sort of ecological, biological eyes as the top of some of the geos that we've been diving on? Or does this look, or were we expecting it to have much more sediment than those geos because of the kind of, somewhat of this rim that that's around this, uh, Possibly called there. I mean, it kind of looks similar. It's just a little bit more un unconsolidated. What do you? Um, I mean, but you're I the, mean, the geologist. What we've you know? seen. Well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what we've seen. Fishy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, oh, another fish. There's Ooh. also a couple in that Atlantic, I think. That yeah, so there's one. There's like one or two. Out okay. In the water. Oh. Can we zoom on? This is a fish place. Mm -hmm. Very fishy. Sense. 
Um, Those are small. Compared to the tops of the geos that we've seen, uh, okay. you know, we see a lot more kind of plain sediment occasionally with ripple marks, uh, but we also do see fields uh, that are a combination of uh, 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 sediment, like pelagic sediments and uh, uh, rocky or manganese crust debris like this, so in a very poorly sorted uh, sedimentary setting. Dinosaurs. And when I use the term poorly sorted, uh, sedimentary geology, that uh, means that you're seeing a uh, large range in uh, grain sizes. So um, here, uh, those those pebbles and those cobbles, and even those boulders that you're seeing here and there uh, count as different grain sizes, all the way down to the clay-like silts that, uh, that we're uh, tossing up uh, from the thrusters right now. So a well-sorted sediment is something that's all um, basically one grain size. Got it. Mm. Yeah. And that's what we thought we, we might encounter in a space like this. You could potentially find that kind of very organized kind of one, one grain size sediment that's been settling for long periods of time. Yeah, potentially. Because we are in a in an area that is flat, it's the summit region, and uh, generally we've been finding a lot of sedimentation uh, uh, in these uh, summit areas where there's enough uh, flat terrain. And this possible caldera, I'm trying to remember the dive plan uh, precisely, but it kind of opens it opens up. There's a, a side of it where there is no rim, kind of falls off the side yeah. of the sea mount. Is that, oh, is that right? Yeah, that's what it, that's there. what it seems to uh, look like, and that's entirely possible for there's caldera there? systems too. Sometimes. Oh, there's just another halosaur going by. If we could get it, almost like a little chair. Oh wow! And there's yeah. actually yeah. I can see in the still cam oh, there's another yeah. one too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Because you have um, calderas don't necessarily kind of cleanly drop in all cases. Uh, sometimes there's episodic drop. Sometimes you only get one part that really subsides, uh, 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 depending on uh, you know what what sorts of dynamic processes are happening underneath it. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, there's even like trapdoor style collapses. So you don't always have a well-defined uh, wall around the entirety of the caldera. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, like kind of how with the uh, Kilauea in 2018, only a portion of the uh, caldera floor really dropped. And mo most of that uh, area was, uh, it did end up uh, uh, responding to that deformation, but um, it, it was really uh, the area uh, under and uh, near the uh, Halima'uma'u lava lake, uh, which is a uh, uh, which is pretty closely tied to the uh, the magmatic system um, in the crust and further down uh, at the uh, uh, crust mantle boundary. Um, that's where a lot of the collapse happened because that's where a lot of the uh, magma had been uh, uh, emptying out of that um, that plumbing system and into uh, um, into the lower east rip zone. Oh, okay. So yeah, and and collapses can be uh, can be tied to eruption events too. Um, in uh, like silicic systems, you know, high silica systems where it's going to be a little more explosive. You know, it's it's always, it, it's, you know, the mechanisms of the collapse are always, um, it, it, it last I, I saw, which is a while ago, it's um, an active area of research trying to figure out, you know, um, a little bit of a chicken and egg problem, you know, or, uh, what starts first, the collapse or the eruption. Um, and maybe there's some sort of a uh, uh, pistoning mechanism too with the uh, the blocks that are dropping down. Uh, you know, if they're if they're kind of pushing some of that uh, that magma out and erupting it as uh, uh, ash or what. So you know, there's there's it, it's just such a dynamic process to uh, generate one of these calderas. That it's, it's just you can spend a whole lifetime studying it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah big systems, big complex systems. <laughs> <laughs> Bring them on. That talk about Crater Lake was reminding me of an uh, incredible, I, th I don't know if it's a crater or a caldera. I wonder if uh, Dr. Val, just looking at an image like this on uh, my, is, would do you have a? Can you immediately say whether that's a crater or a caldera, or it's, you'd need to know more about the formation of this volcano and 
Um, it's a eruption uh, cycle. I always get a little cautious interpreting spaces with water in them just because you don't always know what's underneath. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that would be pretty consistent with a small uh, uh, caldera morphology. Small caldera, cool. So. Yeah, it's on the Latacunga Loop. Uh, the, the rim is called the Kilotoa Loop in, in Ecuador on those, the chain of volcanoes that runs between Quito and Cuenca. Includes Cotopaxi and Chimborazo, some oh, of the, okay. some of the yeah, I don't know Ecuador very larger well. volcanoes in South America. Yeah, uh, yeah, looks like it's a caldera. So cool. Yeah, I mean that's that's it's a little hard to a little hard to get a crater quite that big. It's a beautiful spot to camp. You can hike oh, right yeah, up to it and, and camp along the edge, and it's yeah. uh, it's really gorgeous. Yeah, that map view you can kind of see get that spot from you. Plains that are reminiscent of like a ring fault. Yeah. Oh, fun man, I haven't thought about calderas a whole lot lately. <laughs> so, you guys are, uh, you guys are getting me to shake a little dust off of that knowledge. <laughs> I had a, a fun time uh, riding on the top of a public bus to get to the little <laughs> camp outside that on caldera. The top. With, uh, on the top with a, a bag that I didn't realize was filled with living things, but started moving oh. when I leaned on it. And uh, look, took a peek inside, and guess what? Chicken. Guinea pigs. Oh. Guinea pigs. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, alive? They were alive, but oh, not yeah. for long. They were oh. queen. They're gonna be. Uh, they're gonna be snacks. I'm pretty sure, but no. uh, juicy ones. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just kidding, Huna. <laughs> Just hey. kidding, Huna. Oh dear. When in Rome, we we're talking about the Romans. <laughs> we we're talking about pets and food at the same time. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> there is a cat outside our lab, a microbio lab, and my teacher named him Fluffy, but I kept calling him Monopua. Uh, and uh, he responded to Monopua more than Fluffy, oh. I want to say. So he did respond to that. Hey, at least he's not in the ceiling of your lab. Yeah, that's funny. Oh. That's true. <laughs> oh that's true. He was about to be. Oh. Yeah. yeah he kept yeah. wandering in our classroom. And I'm like, oh, OK. He's just trying to get a uh, higher education. <laughs> there you go. Fair point. Uh, hey, higher education should be accessible to anybody who wants it. I agree. Including yeah. the kitties. Yeah. And I suppose squirrels, but they just need to stay out of our lab, please. <laughs> we had, um... Those barnacles? Oh. On the, the rock pebbles? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Seeing a few of them here and there. Yeah. Actually, a lot of them. Yeah, the, uh, the sediment distribution has changed, too. The sorting is still poor, but better. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're going from the finer uh, fractions and then all of a sudden cobbles. Yeah, if you love volcanoes, Ecuador is a great place to go, actually. Uh, so I hear. Yeah, yeah. Not, don't have to travel very far to see some of the world's uh, most interesting and some of the most active volcanoes. And wow. Dodge lava and go whitewater rafting. You're right on top of the bus. Yeah. <laughs> At least you used to be able to. and. Uh, and you can head down to the coast, catch some good waves. Sounds amazing. Montañita. Yeah, lots yeah. of fish on this uh, in this area. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm planning a trip there next year, so I'll have to get some tips. Yeah, My sister I love just right. moved down there, so I'll be oh, visiting. It's wow. a it's a beauty. They pack so much into just a, mm, such a, a small little country. There's a trackway of some sort oh, yeah. on the left. Yeah, and it goes all the way up there. Wow. And then we got a long thing. <gasps> Oh, that was a tripod oh, fish. Was there? Oh. Okay, can, I think so. can we stop here for a fish. moment, please? <laughs> we got to catch our breath. Do you think it hurt us? Yes. It might have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it bolted. Bolted away. You're dead. We were just too excited about it. But there's a cool pink blob by the bamboo coral whip. <gasps> I was not expecting to see a, um, is, a, is a, a uh, coral. coral. Oh, there she is. In the sediments like yeah. this. Well, that could be an yeah, we'll need to we'll need to zoom before I. Yeah. Can we zoom in. Yeah, maybe. That was cool. Yeah. Okay. So all the polyps are on one side. It looks like. So Although, like let, let's primnoid. let's look. Let's look. Primnoid? Let me stop making assumptions. 
what we got. Uh, let's go back over to chat. Oh, nice. Okay. Is there such a thing as unbranched aritagorgia? Uh, Radicipes. Okay. There's We're gonna chance. have to go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the for yeah. the peek at that. Thank you. Yeah. That, that was, was awesome. a surprise. I did call up to bridge and to just kind of hold since we're approaching that waypoint. Okay. I don't know if we want to like figure out a game plan of what we want to do. Um, yeah, we should figure out a game plan. Yeah. yeah the rim of the crater or, or the rim of the caldera or possible calderas was pretty interesting oh, as we were coming yeah. in. Whoa. Oh, hang on. Ooh. Can you see me? Yeah, I mean, this might just turn into a fish. Whoa. Can we turn the lasers oh, off? Just, oh my gosh. Thanks. Gorgeous. Oh wow, this one's so weird looking. <laughs> so big old eyes. Its eyeballs I love are those so eyes, large. Yeah. <laughs> Fish eyes. Wonderful. Wow. wow. This looks like one of those true macurids. This looks the scary. Scales on it. <laughs> Is that a it's a little bit googly. Like right? yeah. yeah, like maybe a corphanoides. Yeah, that thing. <laughs> wow. It is definitely cool. slightly googly eyed. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It's so oh, cute. A little <laughs> cup of kahi eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, all kind. Googly. Gotta go. Okay, thank you. Awesome, thank you. A fish like this, what is it probably eating down Ooh, here in the ocean? Deck? I just, just read a paper. <laughs> um, because I was interested, um, and they so one they can leave traces like Lebensmann, like some of what we can see here on the seafloor, and they're um, often uh, crustaceans and, and and like polychaete worms and small um, small organisms that are like uh, often um, in the sediment or just on top of the sediment. So pretty cool. Awesome, thank you, Virginia. Yeah. Oh, what do you think about this area for a push score? Do you think there's potential? I was thinking that. So yeah, um, once once we're uh, once we're in a uh, stable position, Ooh, yeah. Oh, fish. Ooh, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and I think we've got yeah, something Virginia. floating over top. <laughs> I love it. Is that another one right below? Yeah, like yeah. yeah. There's a lot. Of a lot of fish. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. All the fish in the sea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a it's shrimp. Not, it's not quite like the super tripod tripod fish, but I think it's in like the same kind of group. Okay. Yeah, we're seeing all sorts of uh, fishes. Well, seeing all sorts of traces around here. So. Um, Can you zoom in. Yeah, zooming. Are the fish attracted to this habitat because of that sediment and potential for finding food? Does that seem like a potential explanation why we're seeing quite a few? fish species? I mean, this seems like a pretty stable environment. Mm. Um, and, oh, another halosaur. Um, wow. And, yeah. The coloring. What is yeah, that? Yeah, so this is, anemone. yeah, so is this it? is, this is the, um, this is kind of a, a tripod fish. Um, you can tell because it is um, kind of sitting on its legs, on, nope, on its fins like legs in the Ipnopidae. Um, potentially the Bathip Teroys atricolor, but yeah, there's a couple, it looks like there's a couple of polyps around this too. Yeah. These fish are pretty cool and they've got very adapted, I mean they've just, like all of their fins that are adapted to like living on this sort of sedimentary seafloor. Um, yeah. Yeah, you so can, this is, I mean it. this is a soft, soft sediment habitat that we're looking at right now. And, and look, we, those might be more of those either those solitary giant polyp things. Um, sclerotinians, um, yeah, or or maybe even, yeah. And we've Does got remind another, me of that. That looks like a sea pen there too. This is pretty cool. Oh, did we get the laser lights on to measure this fish we yet? We had it on. I know we had it on. It on. <laughs> okay. I mean, it was on, and I oh, turned yeah. it off. Awesome. Right. It's pretty small. Right. So that's good to know. It's it's a, just a little bit over 10 centimeters. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 
This is interesting. Great, thank you. Yeah, and you can see all sorts of different trackways mm -hmm. from some sort of critter or critters. Yeah, once uh, once we're in a uh, oh, good yeah, spot, we got another, we got another tall oh, yeah. sea penny another type thing and long a thing. Looks like that might be a fish over there. Okay. Yeah, once once Any we're place in particular, just um, right here. Yeah, here's here's fine if this is a stable spot for us. Are we stopped? We are. Yeah. It might have to come my way a little bit more just because you might yeah. get pulled on. I don't know if we're stop, stop. Oh, I should well, have taken a still cam. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Adelaide is yeah. evening out. Are we still waiting for some swing? We're going to get closer to... Yeah, just to be Okay. Safe. Fine by me. Yeah. Yep, a sediment. All right. Yeah, we're just off waypoint 11. Okay. Wow, this is a cool wider view. Well, look at all these halosaurs. <laughs> Halosaur haven. Yeah, this is interesting. Could it that be shape could be, yeah. Could it be a oh, I just got a bunch of ideas. Might be able to take a look at that later. What are we looking at? Uh, something in the upper right corner. Oh, there's a couple of them. Maybe some sea pens or something. There's some to the left too. Make it to you. Plenty of time. Can we zoom in? I can tell. That's great. Eta. Ooh. Wow, is that oh. another sea pen? Oh. Sea pen yeah. thing. It looks like one of those Umbalula species. Like, kind of? Umbalula? But also, like, not? Yeah. I don't think that's a huge polyp. That is. Right. That's why I'm like, I. It's so. I think. I know some are like one. 1300. Yeah. Or like one of those one polyp species, I think. But it also uh, looks like there's another multiples. polyp growing on it. Yeah. There's definitely a smaller one lower. And that might. Yeah. I think that's a third polyp there. There's, yeah. Just like like three. Awesome zoom. Yeah. But maybe. Oh. You have more zoom than that. that. That's maximum zoom. Maximum nice. zoom. Awesome. Nice. Thank you for that. Beautiful. That is a bizarre looking organism. How bizarre. Ah! Oh no! He's in that camera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt the other day. I was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, look, I think there's another one up there, too. Yeah, there oh, is. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Oh, that's um, bizarre. Yeah, Sako says Umbalura. Uh, however, he's the bat. I'm really? tripping over my words. Oh, Umbalura. 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 Oh, I see something that looks similar to that in the, yeah, in the guide. Cool. It's amazing the different morphologies ah, they can have. Our biologists have nailed yeah. it. All right, so we're going for push core? Yes. Um, anywhere around here should be fine. I have no idea how thick the sediments are. <laughs> we're about to find yeah, out. We are. There's enough that there seems to be a pretty active, like, you know, um, yeah. and fauna. Sort and of given the trackways I'm seeing and the lack of things producing them, they could well be burrowed. So that could tell us that there's a... Uh, there's a little bit of depth here to work with. Mm 
These circular patches are kind of interesting too. Makes me think of yeah. antlions almost. Antlions? Yeah. 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 I forgot antlions. what they said the Makura 11 spiron looked like. Uh, antlions uh, are. Um, they're a type of larva, I think. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. Um, in, like an insect or something, and they prey on ants, and they. they what they do is they burrow down into into uh, sandy environments and they form a little cone, and uh, uh, that cone is basically um, that they're at the bottom of in the sand. Uh, it's at the angle of repose of the sand, which makes it uh, very easy to uh, disturb that sand and cause it to flow down. So if an ant gets into it and it tries to come back out, it really can't because it's just like struggling to get back uphill against all this loose sand coming down, and the ant lion can grab it that way, take it down, and eat it. Oh, well, that's terrifying. The ant throws sand up onto oh, the yeah, that's sides right. to get Yeah, they, they the throw sand up to yeah. get the ant to slip down, too. Oh, Do you want sample cameras? Kind of, uh, kind of brutal. Not until oh. I get over there. Oh, okay. that's scary. fan of these kind of tube cord the I like balls I don't like these things so. these are for side grabbers I'm not a side grabber <laughs> <laughs> I mean the ones on the end have a different hold on them yeah those are hard to get though they get progressively harder as you go down it sounds like a reconfiguration <laughs> needs to happen here <laughs> well we haven't had a lot of need for True. Push cores, so. Can yeah. you push the box out a little bit? Yeah, give me a second. You don't have to go very far, just a little. How many are we gonna do? Uh, I think just one. Should be, should be Nobody good. Nobody does should. just one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll be greedy and take the balls. Like the dive? Yeah. Alright. Got another halosaur in the Look background. That. I'm lucked out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any old place? Yep. Can we zoom way in on that? That's good. It won't go over anymore. I'll just do it out here. going in anymore. I think so. Hard to tell. <laughs> right. That <laughs> might be it. Just one little more hammer there, Robert. Ah, <laughs> I'm impressed. Me too. Wow. It's no coffee can, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more shot here. Yeah. Oh, 
Wow. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Got a decent yeah, that's, uh, yeah, sedimentary. That's not a bad dude core right there. Yeah. Yeah. If it stays in there. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> and it's getting stuck in something clay-like. Sometimes that uh, holds fairly well. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Maybe. Maybe it's very. I always kind of wonder if like a dipstick or something would be good to test uh, right. a set yeah. of thickness. A little chopstick. Before. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Herc her should have chopsticks on board for sure. <laughs> Sampling chopsticks. Oh, that'd be fun. Got a Mr. Uh, Miyagi sample. Uh, of it's, yeah. falling out. Uh -oh. it's falling out. Uh-oh. Yeah, I think it fell out. Fell out. Dang. And it didn't really help me in trying to find where to put it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, is... you know what we gotta do? Not the most straightforward of tasks. Just do it right next to that. Yeah. Yeah. This is. This is really hard because <laughs> it is. <laughs> you can't yeah, see what you're doing. You can't zoom in. Yeah. So it's sort of a pig and a poke here, but here, Zach, can you help me with the uh, Atlanta view? I'm zooming in more, so you can yeah. maybe see. Okay. It's just when it heaves, it's kind of hard to. Yeah, I know. But something. So yeah, this you don't get like a dead straight up and down push core, and there's a lot wrong with this. But the right thing is that you don't have to go very far. Well, it looks like pretty straight on oh, Atlanta. <laughs> We have to Actually, get weather right now. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. pull it out. <laughs> nice. It's not in the hole. I know. <laughs> Nice work, work, Robert. Oh, Thank awesome, you. Robert. It wasn't very deep. That's okay. The sediment cores are not easy. Hey, Nav, confirming that was sample 110. 110. I have. Oh, yeah, 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 perfect. Okay, Thank cool. You. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Alvin Cruz, I was just on, was nothing but push cores. Like, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it's one after another. Yeah, in case you're watching us, you missed all the action. We just pulled a uh, second uh, core right by the side of the vehicle where we keep the uh, quivers for the, uh, for the push cores, which makes it easier to uh, put them away. Oh, that was a long roll. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes we get little dust devils back there when you're looking at oh, the side. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thrusters make like a, it's 
kind oh, of Oh, that's fun. neat. <laughs> oh, see, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Turbulence. Okay. What's the plan of attack? So what I'm thinking um, might be interesting to continue um, moving east over toward uh, the uh, the other side of the uh, Caldera Rim, where we kind of lose the wall, and it looks like uh, you know either there's a wall collapse or maybe just no wall for whatever other reason. Maybe we could do that in a couple of hops if that's okay. Sure. And then uh, once we hit that and check it out. Um, yeah, I, I would be interested in maybe tracking around uh, one of the rims right near the slope break. I don't know if we'll see much there, but um, we might be able to uh, get some potential structural information if we're lucky. Okay. Probably we won't, but might give it a shot. Cool. But um, yeah, if we if we do a couple of hops over to um, over to the other side, um, I think that way, uh, you know, if there's uh, 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 over that way. Uh, th that'll give us a chance to uh, stop and look at um, any fish or sea pens or anything that anyone wants to look at. Oh, thing. this is what a fish heck? thing. This is a fish thing. I know this. I've seen this. I don't. Know, I don't. I don't have the words for it, but uh, the fish thing. that is made by some kind of fish is like it's 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 either it's either to like a mating thing. Mate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I right. it's like yeah. I've seen yeah. things like that. I think it'd be good to zoom in on it. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, and what is it though? Just like the fish uh, make a little sandcastle yeah. to attract the. Yeah. Uh, attract yeah. The you know what? That is puffer fish. Yeah, certain oh. types of puffer fish, but I don't think there's any deep water puffer fish like that over here. <laughs> is there? It's I a don't know. it's a courtship display. Oh, wow. Wow. Fascinating. And it happens wow. as deep as well. Apparently. Wow. <laughs> I just. I was today Wait. years old when I learned this. There's, um, I, I hate to, years. there are things here. <laughs> there are tubes. Oh. Don't, don't they like Why decorate are they them? In a perfect circle? I think they do, but they decorate them more s with sand. They just kind of <laughs> put like little designs in them. Kind of like how ravens like shiny things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think they do decorate them. I don't, yeah, I've never heard of them actually decorating them, but maybe, maybe they do. I just Hang on, I'm in Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Are we at full zoom? We are. Okay. Uh, Can't get too close or we'll uh, stir up all the, yeah. all the sediment. Um, oh, interesting. Can you, you can come down a little bit? Yeah. Well, you can see in the still cam, it's actually, it is actually pretty, it is raised up um, yeah. somewhat. Is there any chance it could be like egg remnants? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know like, yeah, some, some fishes like tilapia, they like to make What's these little right Mounds for their eights. Starfish. Sea star. Alright, structures found at depths 10 to 30 meters on the seabed up the south coast. Okay. Um. Hey guys, Sebastian in the lounge. Hey Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. Hey. Please help us. <laughs> um, this patch, I think I've seen something similar in a paper that was showing um, feeding. Uh, Documenta documenting feeding events from Dumbo octopuses. Oh. So sometimes a lot of these features in the seabed are actually markings from feeding events from octopuses or animals jump like popping down on the seafloor, grabbing something, and then going back up into the water column. So it is possible that it is that. I'm not sure, I'm so but it is a possibility. Yeah. I thought I might just point that out. No, that okay. is, yeah, that is awesome. an idea. Um, Thank you. One thing that you can't see is that it is actually like a couple centimeters of height at the top here, but there's also some white organisms in every single one of these little divots, I think. Hmm. Huh. Okay, I can see that now. Yeah. Then I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. No, no we, we appreciate the input because, uh, yeah, we're, um, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. stumped. Tough yeah. to ID aliens. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta lean with the Sorry. egg nests, like what um, Dr. Val in Virginia was saying, because a lot of times I feel like fish. This is like just from my knowledge of shallow water fish, but they do like to bury their eggs in mountains like these, or have these little burrows, and it kind of looks like with the way like it's mm. divided. 
and the way that it's raised. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. I it just, reminds me exactly yeah. of that. Yeah. Interesting. And we sure that an organism didn't just bury itself under there and the white tips aren't so we got a white some kind there of too. appendages? Oh. That's um, not a question. I mean, it's a it's giant it's attack it's worm. I like it. I mean, so those are also small depressions and it could be easy for things, uh, you know, lighter objects to uh, collect in there too. That's I mean, true. we're seeing how some of the larger stones have kind of sorted themselves into those depressions. And that can just come from like degradation of a, of a nest too. Because it looks like this one's been here for a while. It doesn't look like the like the really pristine, freshly made ones that they show on the documentaries. Yeah, I feel like because usually they're kind of like divided, and I feel like as time goes on, like it just piles up in there, and yeah. then it just goes down into those divots that were like used to bury that hole. Oh, I wish Chris Kelly was on. Yeah, I think stuff drifts into the holes. Like, you see, like, pyrosomes that'll drift across the bottom, and any little tiny little divot will collect in there. So it looks like they're in an organized pattern, but mm -hmm. we just, it's just because there's a depression there. Oh. There's other white things around here. Yeah. yeah. Those look like snail shells. They, they do kind of look like mollusks, don't they? It's hard to tell. Oh, that one's alive. That one's moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah, that yeah. one's a little snail. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, it's so cute. He's just out for a walk. It's a nice day. Yeah, this is interesting. I think you are right that it is catching some things, and I think yeah. there might be snails. Yeah, I think it's just gathering some detritus. Those spots. Um, but it is weird. I, it I could be, think that's it a could fish be thing. feeding strategy, like Sebastian was saying, but the, the, the raised sediment. Oh, what is that? It's a little worm. We something. got, yeah, so that's evidence of a worm. Where is the end of it, though? Is it coming out? Yeah. 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 I didn't think. I didn't think fish things like this happened in uh, deep environments. So I'm, I'm just still like. I'm not convinced that this is a fish thing, but I don't I'm think not. So either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could be wrong. I think I, I, I agree with. Sebastian on the octopus, maybe. Ooh. Maybe it just came on. I like that. Like the top there. Yeah. There do, could be. Do we see sort of eight? Like, the, is the geometry kind of consistent with uh, with what we might expect if uh, if an octopus came down? Because there well, are. If an octopus came down, see, I don't know about that because I would imagine that there'd be a larger like spray of disturbed debris. Yeah. Um. The thing that kind of gets me too is that it's like sucked up into a pile, so maybe. The octopus is because so <laughs> maybe those white bits are there is a, a fish or a shell or something mm -hmm. like there that. There is kind of a distinct geometry, though. You can count the you can count kind of the number of uh, stands, and in my in my eyes, it looks like maybe eight. But yeah, yeah. the only yeah. thing with that is that the the beak of an octopus is actually very it's very strong, right? Like you would see an indent there. I feel right. like hang on a sec. Now it could be an octopus underneath. All right, one sec. Uh, Sebastian, if you're in the lounge um, and you okay. have that paper available, can you uh, put a screenshot of any like photos of the uh, Dumbo octopus uh, version in uh, in the chat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I what I could. He's going to look for it. Thanks. All oh, right. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, this is this is wild. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool to see the snails around it as well. Um, what depth are we at? I think uh, the... 1,300. 1,300, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, wow. We're at 1,527, yeah. Um, the other thing 
that I was just looking up was um, McCurrid eating patterns, and they can create sort of hoof-like um, um, patterns, but I don't know that they would create sort of um, mounds like that. Yeah. Which is interesting. Oh, here's something. It, I don't think it has the same geometry, but looking from this image, as yeah. my computer decides to load, Oh, it's it's not as complex as some of those pufferfish ones that have been uh, documented, but it is very reminiscent. Yeah, I I completely agree. Oh, hang on! I've just found a nature paper. Uh, that is not. Oh, <laughs> it still is pufferfish centric. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so this one is <laughs> from the Guardian.com, so I don't know how reliable this is. For the but what? Guardian.com. Um, so I don't know how reliable this is. This is a paper from yeah. um, Antarctic, and so the mound doesn't look terribly similar to this one that we're seeing, but it is a sign of a nest from what you're like, McCurrid fish. Mm. Um, yeah, and so the, like I feel like, but you'll see like series of them. Um, they do have different mounds. morphologies yeah. in the examples I'm seeing. So some are more complex than others. Some are more um, prominent than others. There's been a few oh, mounds these are here stages. There, so okay. Might be something to keep a lookout for. It doesn't tell me how big it is. Sorry guys, this is what research uh, looks like sometimes when uh, Science. We're, we're all we're all uh, we're all uh, digging through some papers at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. radius of the circular structure and that of the final central zone measured 79 to 105 centimeters and 31 to 50 uh, respectively. So we're looking at something that's only about 20 meters di or 20 meters 20 centimeters diameter. So this that's is quite it. small. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is about 20 centimeters. Yeah. So it's not as large as the uh, yeah. uh, pufferfish ones uh, seem to be getting. Yeah. It could ah, be thanks, from, Megan. Um, like, Virginia is saying from a McCurd fish. Um, yeah. I can't see what the. Uh, Megan are, just sent a link in the chat to the paper that uh, Sebastian was talking about. Yeah. The. Um, the paper that I have that just recently came out looking at um, uh, McCurrids, it's a very sort of hoof-shaped pattern. Okay. And they don't, they're not in this intricate circle. Okay. Um, so it's like a single depression yeah, thing? Yeah, and, and it's, it's random. Okay. Now, it could be that there's, you know, an organism that decided to do something different, but... They envelop their food with their arms and web and take up their meal flapping heavily. Okay. Um, it could be that this, yeah, this was like a feeding event too, and it just like was happened so long ago that just a bunch of yeah. stuff just piled up. Um, yeah, the other thing too is like a change in um, topography, like could change. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Trying to get an idea of the, the trace here. Is there any more? Oh no, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Well, cool. Um, it's a mystery. Yeah. It's beautiful. Hey, I like it when I get stumped. Me too. You like yeah. it when I get stumped or when you get stumped? <laughs> oh, when I get stumped. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, no apology <laughs> needed. I'm just ragging on you. <laughs> it, it was an opportunity. I took it. <laughs> So we done here? Um, yeah, we got some good images. I, I think, think so. Yeah. Yeah. Thank. Thanks for uh, sitting with us while we yammered. Yeah, well, I <laughs> yeah. I, I can't find a trace in that article, unfortunately, of uh, what the uh, Dumbo octopus touchdown left behind. But yeah, that's really cool. This uh, that is very. This very punitive spherical. caldera is uh, giving us all sorts of neat things to look at. Let's see if we can spot another oh, what's one. What's going on right yeah. here? Let's zoom in. Oh, it's just a rock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> just a rock. That's a pretty big rock. It's got a lot of <laughs> snails on it, though. Or snails or the barnacles. Snail 
top of the neck. Yeah. Sure. Very dirty Interesting. Yeah, so I found that um, I was able to trace the paper from that that um, uh, article that they they shared with us in the chat, and the the the, the cert it is definitely a, still a circle, um, but it does the the shape of it and the height of it's very different too. I did yeah. take a picture in the still cam, and you can see that there is some height to the uh, to yeah the circle. No, there, there, there's there's. Um, there's definitely yeah. uh, some uh, but it is dome it morphology going on, which yeah. tips me off about the uh, possible puffer fish thing. But it's yeah. a little small for that, so it, yeah, don't know. Very interesting. Which is super cool. Very interesting. There Thanks, y'all. Oh, yeah, hey, model. we found a thing. It's a thingy. Yes, it is a thingy. Says, yes. <laughs> some friends on the internet possible experts in this possible caldera. <laughs> I've seen this a ton of places across the seafloor. I've never seen it, but uh, people online, if you know what it is, tell us. Wait, they didn't say what it was? No, they just said they see it all, you know. <laughs> it's like a 7-Eleven. It's, like it's on every corner down here. It's very helpful. <laughs> ABC That's very store. helpful, chat. It Thank like you. <laughs> We do appreciate your input. Yes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> now, if anybody has any insights, that's welcome. We uh, we could definitely use a few more clues to chase down. Yeah, I will say, not, I don't think anyone in this room is a is a sediment person. Um, Probably just or a like heads a soft up. sediment. We're gonna head back this way. Okay. Researcher, so. I I know a little bit of sedimentology. But um, pretty much when it comes to the bio part, it's basically that's where I can interpret structures that are bioturbation. I don't necessarily know the origins of them. And in fact, in most cases, I don't. I just know that it was produced by something that was alive. So that's about where my expertise ends in sediments. Mm -hmm. I've been accused of having sediment uh, accumulating in my brain. <laughs> I don't know what they meant by that, but it uh, didn't seem nice. <laughs> it seems like you've dusted out things off pretty well on this expedition. So. <laughs> dusted them off for you guys. Yeah. For the 8 to 12. Oh, oh, there's, there's another one right there. There's another one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure we do the see them everywhere. Yeah, yeah. See there's them two everywhere. of them. Or is it the same Did one? we just turn around? Oh. There's more up there, too, to the right, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait, what's, yeah. what's this? Let's, off in the distance. Let's poke one. I mean. Y'all, what is? Is that a slide? You have a little bit of room. You can try to go look. I mean, we could go look well, at the same one for another okay, 10 minutes. Okay, but also, is this the same that one? Looks, that, that I don't think so, because it has another circular So we yeah. see yeah. There's a few of them, actually. These? There's a few small ones. Yeah. Two like, next up. to each other. So I feel like I really want to lean towards nests, because you'll see these in series like this, especially if it's a colony of fish. Mm. Oh, We're well, seeing a lot of fish. And a really yeah. big sea pen. There's a lot pen. of your uh, levis spring around there, like trails, Yeah, there right? is all of yeah. these little trails, too. Yeah. There's a lot of activity in No, this, this place is Please alive. Yeah, and you also see, like, smaller circles there, too, which gives me an inclination that it might also be some nests that are just, like, hopping off of the other one. But I don't know what those, mm. like, they why they're so, like, placed, like, perfectly mm -hmm. asymmetrical. Yeah, they seem to be lacking geometry. the same structure, though, some of those other circles. So I wasn't sure if that was just some natural feature of the sediment or if that was some uh something this one has bio more influence. indents as well I, I can't tell but i think that's a really good question you raised there maybe so. something predates yeah. on the eggs maybe they're laid in a circle and then there's like yeah, a it could well be yeah. i feel like this is like that looks less bioturbated to my eye but i could be very wrong about it that could too be older yeah yeah because I'm just looking at the picture from these ice fish that look like McCurrids in the Weddell Sea. And it, it isn't very um, dug out, I guess. They just, yeah. like, put sand on top oh. of it. But, hmm. you, like, it, they're usually in series. Okay. But I don't know why these ones are Ooh, a little bit more spread cool out. Sea pen. And there's something there, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we start seeing a lot of these, that's, that's when we have to start asking the question, is this some sort of a uh, breeding ground? I mean, we've seen a if whole bunch of small thinking. halosaurs, so like... Yeah, exactly. That's what I just Googled, not gonna lie. That is a large sea pen. It is, in fact, a very large sea pen. It is a unit. It is <laughs> a unit of a sea pen. An entire unit of a sea pen. Zoom in.
It has a very different peduncle than the one that we sampled yesterday. Oh, I love that word. Yes. Me too. Peduncle. Peduncle is a great word. The physiology of these sea pens is just, I, I'm still baffled by them. Uh, Asako IDs uh, Penachula. Oh, Penachula. Or Penatula. Pen, yeah, I don't know how to. I would, I would say Penatula, but okay, I, thank you. that's um, thank not you. always the best. Yeah, so. yeah you know, Midwest <laughs> words. <laughs> it happens. are difficult. Hey, we we know all the all the potential uh, ways to pronounce something at least. I knew I do know many different ways to pronounce the, the joys same of the word. English language. Yes. Many non-unique solutions. Mm -hmm. Keeps things interesting. Okay, it's kind of dusty right here. Yeah. All that. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the zoom. Two make a mess. You know? Yeah. That is all your leash. About to pull it. Uh, Catalina, so I'm spying on your screen back here. Um, would you would you mind uh, zooming it out slightly for yes. a couple seconds? Thanks. Yes. Just trying to get an idea of what the the various walls look like, and it looks like it's steeper on the north end, so that might be an interesting place to check out a little later. Okay. Right, Did you cool. still want to head west after, or sorry, east after this? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I cool. want to see what's going on with where the wall opens up okay. and uh, see if there's anything worth noting there and then uh, yeah maybe we can track north around that uh, slope break. Cool. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you. So we may not answer the question of whether or not this is actually a caldera but um, we've got a lot of cool stuff going on up here and uh, I like that. Mm -hmm. I look a blob. Maybe the fish were just making little uh, miniature models of the caldera, or possible <laughs> caldera. <laughs> Trying to map it out. Yeah. On the seafloor. Yeah. Why not? Uh, 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 Ooh, something's moving over there. Oh, yeah. Top oh, that's a big. Oh, what is wow. that? Is, it, is that a crawly? Is that a massive shrimp? It looks like a giant it shrimp. It's a giant <laughs> shrimp. It's what? what? It makes sense, big beefy <laughs> shrimp. What? what? Help yes, me uh, that. Okay, that is like Whoa. three units. That That's is, the that boss is shrimp right there. <laughs> 25 centimeters? Oh That's my the god. Wow. Guys, right? That's what? a fan shrimp right there. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Shrimp make nests, y'all? Is that a. That's a shrimp. That That's is an absolute shrimp. Yes. Huge. Can we zoom? Oh my big god, trail. that's we bigger than our pond. I mean, oh. we should, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 What? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, it's coming for us. It's coming for oh us. It is absolutely coming <laughs> that's for us. Wild. That thing could take oh on her. Oh my gosh. Wow. And the Olelo Hawaii word for shrimp is opai. Opai. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. I've never wow. seen one that large. In that this crazy. case, opai nunui. <laughs> opai nunui, yeah. Wait, you're telling me that's a Very shrimp large. and not a lobster? Opai. I know it's lobster size. A lobster, <laughs> size. A lobster wow. size shrimp. That could fit on a 10 inch wow. dinner plate. Wow. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh yeah. my god, that's enormous. <laughs> and this is maybe why we're seeing Beautiful. so many fish. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Note to self, dive on more things that look like calderas. <laughs> yeah. That's Whoa. amazing. Look How at it go. That's a beauty. That is yeah. stunning. Oh, they Aww. swim so gracefully too. Wow. They do. Wow. I want to be a shrimp. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I know that they're. The I think oh, we need to redefine the term jumbo shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh, oh, my gosh. oh he's so big. Oh, he's so big. Oh. Oh, it's coming after big us. Big mess. Yeah, that's a prawn. <laughs> they're coming after That was a prawn, not a shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> a big one. Yeah, his dust cloud is pretty much how I look after I'm done with the rock saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's darker over here. Yeah, some serious deep sea dance moves right there. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. Shrimp was it's got doing that little a little salsa yeah. thing going. A little pe uh, oh, well, what is that? star. Oh yeah, nice. As well Ooh. as large stars. Can we zoom in? Yes, I think. Uh, nine arms. 
Yeah. <laughs> so I just found uh, a potential ID for that shrimp in the potential <laughs> <laughs> bucket, and it's um, Ceratospis monstrosus. Monstrosus. Would have been very appropriate. Very yes. appropriate. <laughs> I mean, that thing was basically a 787. <laughs> basically. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Take that thing to the Texas State Fair. You're going to win. <laughs> win the blue ribbon. Yeah. Then they're going to fry it up. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I almost went there, and then you went there. <laughs> I think in an Atlanta cam, in the aft camera, or the aft side of the Hercules, he's still falling around. Yeah. Oh, That's wow. Funny. You see him kind of in the distance you right there. You can see the shrimp <laughs> in Atalanta. Well, how can you not see that shrimp at that size? <laughs> He's like, yeah. if you look behind oh, the... Oh, yeah, yeah, there he is. You see, like, a little right, shadow of him. Can you zoom in? You see the shadow? <laughs> Gosh. Uh, which <laughs> camera? <laughs> uh, he was in Atalanta. You can still kind of see him. I can see oh, him. Oh, yeah. That's another little... Um, that might be another one of those... Oh, Ooh, those three polyp. Yeah. Oh, there's a sea urchin next to it. Oh, there is? Where? Yeah, just over to the oh, left. That's beautiful. That is a beautiful zoom. There we go. That's more than three polyps on that one. I think I'm counting oh, four or oh, five. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting. One, two, three, four. 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 That's fantastic. Okay. Oh, there's so much Googling happening in the back row. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, what are we about to, sc to discover now? Perhaps a rock. It looks like a rock. <laughs> It's a nice rock. Interesting we, we don't need to take any samples. <laughs> Can you zoom in? Sure. Yep, that is a rock with sediments on it. Nice. Some barnacles. There was a pink thing over to the right and up a little bit too. Oh yeah. Some more of those weird mounds. If you look at the Atlantic cam, the shrimp's coming to attack it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's, it's attacking it. Yeah. It is trying to take coming on the Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh, hey. It really, it's. <laughs> I think it might be climbing back up onto the ship. <laughs> it's coming oh, after Oh no. Us. <laughs> it must stay in the depths. Yeah. I think it's alerting all its buddies. Oh, I wonder if that's, what, if that's a rock or a fish that's over there. That's a fish. I think it's Definitely a fish. a fish. Yeah, I don't know what those piles are, though. Mm -hmm. It looks like what <laughs> <laughs> were those <laughs> weird sea mounds. Oh, it's another halos. Well, I'm judging by how the, the tail is moving, but I think that's a halosaur. Judging by nothing but the tail. Oh, uh, this, this kind of looks like the downtown area. Do you see a zoom in? Looks like it. Yeah, zoom in. This is on. Yeah. Look at I all mean, this the is why traffic people, I mean, that's this come is, through. These tracks are what we were talking about earlier, um, like a couple of days ago. These are Lebensbaren, and this is this is yeah. what people can study. And you can tell, you can see why you can study an area. Yeah. Like, this can be your field of study. Because totally. it is so important, and you learn so much about an area that you cannot see. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it's, this is, this area is super busy. It's so alive here. Yeah. And actually, you can see another mound in the distance in the still cam. Oop. Oop. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so this is, looks like in the still cam, that is higher. That's a high, and this is a okay, high. Okay, okay. So it looks like it almost, this was almost dug out of here. Ooh. That, that's different. Merman? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so strange. Is that a sponge? A dead sponge? 
would be know. one. Yeah. In the ditch? It looks like detritus, maybe. Oh, and a pink blob. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah, this looks like this is. Is it sponge? It looks more like detritus of. Yeah. So it looks like there was, um, to me, it looks like maybe something uh, carved there. this out and then things have just been falling into yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah, no, another mm -hmm. way. Yeah, cause you, yeah, you see yeah. this even just naturally occurring on like beaches and stuff mm -hmm. where uh, mm -hmm. you get a little, you get some ripple marks or, um, you know, somebody leaves some put footprints in the sand mm -hmm. or whatever. And, um, oh, this gouge actually. You wait a couple of days and it, it's full of things that have blown into it through whatever winds, current, what have you. Yeah. What are those little red guys? The gouge is a little small, but I know that there's um, there are there are some large marine mammals that utilize this type of sediment as a food source. Okay. Uh, so I know you know the sea pens, the umbululas that we've been seeing. Yeah. Yes. Um, they want us to keep track of how many we see, and um, if we see an eleventh one, we okay. can take a a snip, see if it's snippable we okay. or grabbable. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank okay, you. Sweet. How many have we seen? One? Three. Seen a hit. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is wild. Another circle. Oh, a small circle. With something in the middle. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm starting to understand why folks get excited about crop circles. <laughs> Except this is way cooler. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us on Ala Amwana Kaiuli Expedition Dive Number Eleven uh, for our uh, playtime in the sand. Yeah. Yes. Sediment signs. Hey, I, I I grew up with some sandy beaches, so I'm here for it. You'd you'd be amazed at just what you can do with a little bit of oh, sand wait. in an afternoon. Look at these and divots. Whoa. These are huge. I can think we these get a, can we do the idea of these? Can we get a good, like, what look? are we looking at? And there are oh, two, more, two more oh. mounts here. So there's yeah. two mounts here, but actually there's this deep line here. I mean, it, it could it could be like. It looks like a hole was actually done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so it does. Actually, like the, to me, the, the so like whale thing. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking of a whale. Yeah. yeah oh, whale. whale yeah. Yeah. yeah, which would also explain yeah. why there's like kind of multiple. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. There's so much. That's what I was looking for. That's what I thought maybe the other one was, too. I think this could be um, definitely like a whale came in because these. Are, this is so large, right? It's huge. It, and now we're seeing the sediment coming in from that. What would a whale be doing here? Whales eat these. I think it's like gray oh. whales or um, some beaked whales eat yeah. no way. the sediment. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, see, like, they the make big divots in the <laughs> bottom. Yeah. yeah. I think I, so one there's another sea pen Like we were Number counting. That's yeah, two. that's four. Yeah. Oh, four. Yeah. So are they called these beaked whale scars in the sediment? Is I that think what they so, yeah. yeah. Maybe add it as a, a highlight. Whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, I got you. <laughs> Did you appreciate it? Just there's another big one right there yeah, too. So yeah, this must have been like them. a oh yeah. Another and another, another circle there. That's interesting. You another know? nest slash feeding landing site. Crop circle. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple of these crop circles. And oh, there's another we, we probably circle. shouldn't call them crop circles. I don't want to. I don't want to be part of something that goes viral again. Oh, I can <laughs> see in the still cam that there's something. There's maybe some of those tall um, um, bamboo or not things bamboos, on the left. The, the whip too. things. This is wild. Something around in Atlanta cam over by Herc to the left. Oh, that's scary. Where were you seeing? Um, I could see it in the still cam, just to the left. But it was like, they were very, they were, we might have moved past it already. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's it looked like two more of those, um, those whip-like corals that we saw previously. Oh, yeah. There's a sea cucumber. Yes, you can. Mm, they're also oh, going to be a little like hard to pick below, out against the, uh, the sand. Mm -hmm. Mm 
That was cool. I did not know what to expect coming up here, and this delivered. This is Gee. pretty impressive. Like, this is, yeah. <laughs> Some more, what would you call it, Lieber, Lieber, Lieber spur? Lieben spur. Lieben spur. Yeah. Also, apparently there's two N's and not two R's. Oh, that's, ooh. That's interesting, too. It's very round. Very, yeah, kind of a weird this shape to it. Over here. And that is very scuffed looking. Hmm. Yeah. Signs of life all around. Yeah. Definitely. Is this another one of those? I think so. it might be. Or another another five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's number five. Oh, and there's... Wow, that one looks a little bit more sturdy than the others. Yeah, yeah maybe, kinda maybe it's older? No, I or different species, I don't no know. No idea. Oh, it looks like there might be more some more divots up in, um, in front of us, too. Okay based on the still cam. It makes sense that we saw some of those beaked whale skulls earlier in the dive, maybe? True. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, we saw at least one. Did any of the other watches see one? Oh yeah, look oh, at this stuff. I think there's another. Is that what we were just there. looking at, or is this another one? That's um, something else, I think. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, this is a different one. Yeah. Look at all that. Yeah, I gotta go back the other direction. Oh, there's another sea pen. Oh or yeah, the right one? there. We don't need to zoom on that. That's uh, a different one, yeah. Yeah, so that's six. Wow. What's that right there? That little black thing right below your porch. Is that a coral? The yeah. more the more uh, of this area like we're dead, seeing, dead the more I'm just feeling like, holy cow, this place has some major stories to tell. I mean, it's one of those crazy things when you're talking about the abyss, right? Like this yeah. is this is this is what the the abyssal seaplane kind of looks like. I mean, it's a lower depth, but you you have so much that you just can't see. But there just are these traces yeah, of exactly. it. Exactly. You know. Um, uh, you, yeah. you just kind of feel the hugeness of this place all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And it does play important roles in the ecosystems, you know, it's just, yep. yeah. Oh, right, I was Googling. Oh, another huge Oh, this is different. Ooh. Yeah. Well, it looks like it's built on top of something well, that is like an older structure of some sort. Oh man, you guys and are making a hard rock to use chemist do sediment stuff. I know. It's great. Yeah, there's all sorts of marks all over the seafloor, just anywhere you look. Another unbranched coral. Yeah. Cool. Oh, wow, that unbranched coral looks a little bit different, too. It does look a little bit different. And am I seeing some small fish or something in the water column? In front of us like, in Yeah, the little black flecks just kind of going all in and out. Oh, you I see, see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It could be... Um, could be amphipods. I, I'm, okay. I'm not getting a good look at them. Yeah, we're not going to be able to get a good look at those. Mm -hmm. Zoom in. It's an interesting paper published this year on uh, some of the diving, feeding, the feeding diving strategies of various beaked whales, including oh, uh, Cuvier's beaked whales, which are the deepest diving, mm. foraging mm -hmm. at depths greater than a thousand meters for approximately an hour. Oh. Wow. And uh, oh, yeah, interesting, interesting paper. That was monitoring that acoustically. Now I want to be a beaked whale. <laughs> That'd be something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, there's another one of those sequences. I'd like to hear your folks' too. thoughts on that one. <laughs> All right, 
we start getting yanked on a little bit. Beaked back. whales do sound pretty cool, though. Yeah. My dad has a story of a, it's not beaked whale, but a humpback whale that I can tell you guys during blue water time, but it's pretty trippy. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Yes. Kohola. I don't know if that's another interesting. What is that? Branch. Ooh, Portal. there's something running away there. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Uh, who right are you? There. Is it a spider? No. I think it looks like a, it's a crab. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in. It, it honestly like looks like an urchin. <laughs> is it an urchin getting blown around in the pond? Oh, <laughs> oh, no. It is an urchin. <laughs> it's an urchin. Caught in the thrusters of life. Sorry, bud. Pen. I think it's a different one though, isn't it? Zoom in. Yeah. Yeah, that looks like another uh, type of Umbalula pen. Ooh, dusty. Yeah. another one of those umbulas that we were looking at so I think that was number seven Zoom in. sweet yeah number seven thank you those weird mounds. Okay, sounds great. Um. Oh, we got another fish buddy. Zoom in. Is that another tripod one? That's another one of those, um, I think it was, if not a day, tripod. Those are cool. Didn't yeah. you say that there's a species uh, somewhere that has really long tripods? Yes, there are. There are some really long tripods. Um, Anthosaur? I love the fact he's so unbothered about that dust cloud. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> coming our way. <laughs> he's upwind. Oh, there it goes. Oh, uh, yeah. It's upwind. Yeah. Yeah, the true tripod fish have a very interesting. Um, Whoa. Yeah, we got another one I was with for. Yeah. Oh, there's a sponge skeleton on Big the left, sponge. too. Oh, wild. Wow. We got some. What is a sponge doing here? Whatever a sponge wants. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Wow. Big. Looks like a log. Whoa. It yeah, is it's quite large. Yeah. Right. You gotta. <laughs> yeah, you're good. 
Let Are the, we making let the, Yeah, we keep driving around all over this thing and stirring it all up. Uh, yeah. It's just everywhere now. It's way too easy to do that with these fine sediments, unfortunately. Every time you sit down, you pick up more dirt. Ooh, yeah. Now we're like pig pen. <laughs> <laughs>